Um, welcome back to the uh, continuing lecture in uh, investment analysis. So um, uh, we need to talk about the uh, marginal um, marginal risk because uh, in our last segment, right? Uh, question was, you know, um, how do we know uh, this two point zero six seven percent to almost two percent uh, uh, standard error? Uh, whether that two percent standard error is small enough? I mean, if it is, you know, really negligible, small enough to be negligible, that is, you know, uh, 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 the proof, you know, uh, that is the evidence of uh, our portfolio being sufficiently well diversified uh, to make it, you know, uh, uh, risk-free arbitrage portfolio. And our um, uh, a regression result, right? Uh, from our regression result, uh, the uh, it seems you know um, uh, innocuous. I mean, you know, it seems quite uh, a two percent, you know, annual standard error um, seems you know quite you know harmless. I mean, you know, uh, uh, negligible enough, you know, to. Uh, um, but then, you know, uh, what is the uh, question was, you know, how do we confirm that? How do we ascertain and verify that? I mean, you know, just, just from experience, I mean, empirically, 2%, um, 2% is basically, you know, uh, the target inflation, <laughs> right, <laughs> by the Federal Reserve and uh, annual, 2%, and most of um, Uh, empirically, you know, uh, historical, uh, uh, for the last hundred years, you know, like historical uh, real rate of return, real, real uh, uh, rate of return, risk, uh, on a, uh, like, you know, uh, real interest rate, right, real, um, uh, you know, the, base interest rate, you know, um, uh, of the nominal, you know, base nominal interest rate. I mean, <clears throat> so uh, if inflation has been like 2%, you know, and if the uh, real uh, interest rate is 2%, then, you know, nominal base rate, nominal return is, you know, uh, uh, 4%, right? That kind of, you know, real return has been about, you know, uh, 2%. So 2% uh, uh, standard error could even, you know, uh, why uh, it could be, you know, uh, it could make the difference between the 2% uh, uh, real return or 0% real return. Um, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, uh, uh, on a, you know, uh, like, bank interest rate, right, uh, or, or the, you know, uh, last uh, historical average, of, you know, uh, over the last hundred years. So our question is, you know, uh, we got to have some kind of criteria. We got to have some kind of, you know, uh, a reference point. So the reference point will, uh, so, you know, marginal risk is, you know, measured against that reference point. So what should be the reference point? Obviously, first of all, before forming this, constructing this arbitrage portfolio, an investor must invest the existing wealth somewhere. They must put the uh, existing wealth somewhere. But obviously, then, you know, uh, um, the default it would be uh, uh, T-bills because that's the uh, risk-free, right? Uh, <clears throat> Short run, you know, risk free. So over five year time frame, you you know, or you need to completely risk free, you know, T bills, you know, you need to roll it over five times. Must you know, I'll roll it over five times. So um, and then 
what is the risk of the uh, T bills? You know, <laughs> that is um, uh, T bills. You know, that, that's risk free. But, but would it have any? Um, how can there be a risk? Well, still, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, you would have some, you know, uh, uh, you know, standard deviation of that too, right? Uh, annual uh, standard deviation of real rates from rolling over bills is in the range of 0 0.5 to 1.5% uh, per year. Uh, real, you know, look, because of inflation, I mean, nominal rate, nominal rate, think about it, nominal rate, uh, uh, Guaranteed, you know, uh, nominal rate is guaranteed. Pretty much, you know. So, um, but still, even the nominal rate would have some, you know, uh, uh, range of fluctuation. Uh, <clears throat> why? Because uh, even the T-bill rate, I mean, you know, um, uh, what I'm saying is T-bill rate, uh, if you buy a T-bill today, and if the T-bill, uh, un un unless it is, you know, um, uh, unless it is a, uh, a, a zero coupon, right? <clears throat> T-bills would be a, Uh, T bills can be zero coupon or coupon, but you know, if it is coupon, right? Uh, the interest that it pays, there's no question about it, right? Uh, but the uh, the uh, the yield or the return. Uh, There's a, a there's some variance depending on uh, when you buy it. I mean, for example, you know, uh, you buy T bill today, and one year later, uh, you will um, and maturity. Um, the yield is obviously, you know, uh, uh, mathematically simply just mathematically calculated, but then. Um, T bill price today and T bill price tomorrow. T bill every day there's a market. You know T bill prices, selling price, market price of T bill fluctuates. So depending on you know uh, whether you buy today, tomorrow, or uh, <clears throat> one week from now, one uh, two weeks from now, <clears throat> uh, the the selling price of T bill in the market would fluctuate, and because of that, the yield uh, uh, there will be a uh, you know uh, variation or variance in uh, holding period return. Make sense? Um, so that that is slight you know um, that is the slight uh, reason for you know slight. Uh, variance, variation in uh, table return. Uh, so uh, there has to be, you know, so uh, standard deviation and so even if it is nominal rate, right, even if it is nominal rate, right, uh, there is no uh, standard deviation in The standard deviation in nominal rate, even in nominal rate. Uh, 
and then you know uh, and plus the inflation right uh, plus the you know uh, inflation right so real rate so subtracting uh, you know uh, from nominal rate you know subtract the interest rate subtract the interest rate, uh, I mean inflation then you get the uh, real return so the variance or the standard deviation in the real rate is actually you know uh, getting uh, uh, kind of uh, multiplied or um, then multiply, uh, what should I say, you know, like a compounded, I'm sorry, that would be a better way of saying that, right? Uh, but, you know, as I said, you know, uh, in nominal, right, um, in nominal return, it's relatively small, smaller, right? Uh, but because the standard deviation gets compounded, right? Uh, by the inflation, you know, uh, by the standard deviation in inflation, right? You get uh, uh, bigger, right? I mean, you cannot, you know, make it simply like, oh, this plus this is this. No. The standard deviation, it, 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 it variance, you know, it works, you know, uh, uh, in a different way. Wait times, you know. I don't know how uh, uh, how we apply the weight of the inf inflation, but um, I mean uh, the mechanism behind it. It's not simple, you know. Uh, but even if it is roughly right, uh, you can tell um, uh, the standard deviation in. Uh, Ah, this is standard deviation in uh, real rate would be uh, greater than the standard deviation in nominal rate. Is there a better way? Nice way. Nice way of. Well, um, but you get the idea, you know. Um, it's not exactly, you know, uh, like this plus this is this, right? Um, but at least not approximately, you can tell, you know, this has to be greater. Um, so even, even the, uh, uh, since even T-bills have some, you know, uh, uh, risk, you know, very minimal risk, you know, um, <laughs> T-bills are supposed, aren't T-bills supposed to be risk-free? Uh, yeah, uh, what I'm saying is your return, uh, it's almost, you know, uh, uh, completely, almost, you know, risk-free, but, you know, uh, as I said, you know, uh, T-bills, you know, depending on, uh, because uh, the selling price in the market varies every day, right? Depending on when you buy it, right? I mean, uh, those, <clears throat> although it's annual return, right? They all have some, you know, um, Uh, a variance, right? Um, some range of, you know, uh, uh, variance. So, uh, and the, uh, so, annual standard deviation of real rate from rolling over bills in uh, the range of, you know, um, so it's kind of uh, uh, minimal, but 0 0.5 to 1.5% per year. And, but, you know, since you are investing in, you're building, you're constructing a, uh, 
an arbitrage portfolio, which includes both, you know, um, which comprises uh, both uh, risk-free uh, and, you know, a benchmark, and uh, you either short, uh, depending on, you know, what, uh, you will short, you know, basically, right, uh, the benchmark and uh, risk-free most of it, uh, because if alpha is positive, you will short uh, benchmark and uh, the risk-free T-bills and, you know, put all of them into S&P 500, right? So by having, you know, that um, uh, uh, by constructing an arbitrage portfolio, right? What would be the uh, marginal risk over and above, over and above the uh, initial um, investment position in T bills? I mean, uh, this if this is the risk of the T bill, right? I mean, I I feel very uh, uncomfortable saying risk of the T bill because T bills are supposed to be. Uh, tables are risk-free, and I, I've already explained this. It's not the uh, really the uh, risk of default, but just the uh, range. You know, tables also have you know range. It's not it's not a secret. You, you've seen this like in uh, chapter five or you know um, the previous chapters. You know, um, especially in uh, like you know stock valuation, they were doing you know uh, uh, T bills do have you know. Um, you know, slight, you know, uh, uh, variance, very slight variance, right? So this is the, uh, 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 so let's not call this, you know, risk, but, you know, uh, uh, just standard deviation. It's just, you know, gives this uneasy idea. I mean, uh, but the standard deviation of um, uneasy feeling, you know, I mean, an uneasy idea, whichever it is. But the standard deviation of T-bills, you know, um, which is, you know, um, uh, initial risk, right? Initial, but by constructing a uh, uh, portfolio A, right? Arbitrage portfolio, how much, how, how much marginal risk is there over and above? And if it is, you know, uh, significantly greater than this, then, wow, that, you know, Uh, but if it is, you know, uh, not much different from just, you know, marginally, uh, just marginally adding more risk, more standard deviation uh, to this, then that that's the uh, proof or the evidence of well-diversified portfolio. <clears throat> What would be the change in marginal risk or increase in marginal risk, right? <clears throat> marginal change or increase in risk from adding portfolio A with, you know, um, and what is the uh, uh, standard deviation of portfolio A? It's only about 2%. We all know the two, Two point annually, two point, uh, what was that? Annually, 2.067%, right? <clears throat> to a portfolio with, you know, uh, uh, adding to a portfolio with. Standard deviation of you know 0.5 to 1.5 percent, and <clears throat> since correlation uh, uh, between the two, the, since the correlation between the uh, uh, Treasury bill and uh, uh, S&P 500 uh, is zero, right? There is no you know. Um, uh, <clears throat> There's no, uh, uh, you know, um, middle term, you know, it's just, uh, in other words, you know, uh, there's no covariance between the two. It's just variance plus variance, right? 
Um, so variance of the complete portfolio, right, uh, is exactly the sum of the uh, 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 variance of the uh, 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 individual portfolios, right? So obviously we have only one, you know, um, So the marginal risk of the uh, S&P 500 uh, in other words simply if you add them up you know um, if you uh, uh, the standard deviation uh, of the T bills plus standard deviation of S&P 500 it will be exactly the uh, uh, standard deviation of the uh, complete portfolio, right? Um, or uh, the com complete portfolio uh, minus T-bill uh, will have to be, you know, um, standard deviation of the uh, S&P 500, right? So here, um, the uh, initial portfolio uh, consisting of only T-bills plus uh, arbitrage portfolio, right? And benchmark portfolio M and, oh, this is the keyword, assumed. <laughs> they just, this, just to make it uh, dramatic, they assumed, you know, uh, standard deviation of 20%. And that's, that's understandable. I mean, that, that's kind of reasonable because M portfolio M is, you know, benchmark and the uh, this benchmark is a, a very, very uh, conceptually very broad based, uh, uh, you know, entire financial market. And of course, in the, the entire financial market would have a huge uh, variance, right? It would have a huge variance. So um, a standard deviation of, you know, uh, the benchmark uh, assumed to be 20% is, you know, quite uh, reasonable. Uh, now, think, of, think about it. It's even, you know, it's it's quite reasonable. I mean, it's under, uh, and uh, very uh uh, plausible uh, to assume it this way. Why? Because S&P 500 is basically what? Uh, relatively large cap. I mean, uh, to be 500, to be, you know, one of uh, listed in this S&P 500, you would have to be the industry leader, right? Of course, there are S and P, you know, uh, 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 five hundred small cap, large cap, um, but generally, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> generally, you know, um, uh, Dow Jones is Dow Jones, you know, twenty, it's all, you know, um, uh, cream of the crop. They are like, you know. Uh, top 20 blue chips, but, you know, uh, <clears throat> even if you're not in that Dow Jones, but, you know, S&P 500 would pretty much be the representative of, you know, each industry, right? Representatives of each industry. <clears throat> so they are relatively, you know, very strong uh, companies. But if you, <clears throat> entire, across the entire economy, the cross-section of the economy, doesn't consist of only you know um, strong companies. You know there are very weak, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> with high risk. You know, uh, I mean, uh, in in terms of bond rating, there are companies uh, that range 
that runs there are companies that run the whole gamut uh the right you know everything from you know triple a through you know uh uh <clears throat> triple c you know uh uh, and uh, single seed, uh, uh, triple D, you know. Look, what about those companies? I mean, the entire broad-based, uh, entire financial market, the entire, you know, cross-section of the economy, uh, the risk or the variance would have to be very huge, right? We can, you know, easily, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> understand that. And then, you know, uh, um, so 20%, you know, uh, standard deviation is not a, uh, not such a, uh, uh, in terms of variance, it will be only 4%, isn't that right? But still, in terms of variance, it will be only 4%, uh, right? Uh, because, you know, it's 0.5, let me just make 0.2 times 0.2, right? 0.2 squared. 0.2 squared would be 0.04, right? In terms, so uh, in terms of standard deviation, it looks huge, right? Uh, in terms of variance, you know, it's not that. Uh, right. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> So the idea is, you know, uh, uh, marginal risk from um, T bills plus, you know, arbitrage portfolio is roughly equivalent to the uh, standard deviation of the real rate on T bills, right? So. <clears throat> See, if we add, you know, uh, so think about it. Maybe not. Uh, oh, okay. Plus two percent, right? Uh, across the whole thing. Uh, let me see. Plus. So think about it. Uh, not oh, even real. Um, adding two percent to uh, the real. Oh, and we're adding two percent to the real. Now, this is something I'm not very, uh, this is something I'm not very good with, you know, making. Um, and you all understand this 2% is, you know, uh, Uh, of A, right? Portfolio A. Should I write it there? Uh, give me a second. Give me a break. So we all know what this 2% is. 
S&P 500 portfolio, right? So then <clears throat> it's going to be like 3.46, uh, 2. Uh, uh, 2.57, you know, um, 2.86, obviously, you know. Um, um, <clears throat> 2 percent from the uh, uh, S&P 500 uh, is clearly greater than um, the real, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, the standard deviation in uh, uh, real rate, you know, on T bill, right? And <clears throat> during, you know, um, uh, this these ten year period, right? Um, uh, Uh, 2006 through uh, a five-year period, 2006 through uh, uh, 2010, and this five-year period, right? And this five-year period, right? <clears throat> and um, especially 86 through uh, uh, 90, and 96 through um, uh, 2000, those five years, uh, the standard deviation of the uh, uh, T-bills, real return on T-bills, were uh, very tamed, you know, right? Very uh, uh, stable and low, right? As opposed to, and of course, you know, um, um, what would you expect? You know, uh, the um, these five years were tumultuous, tumultuous five years, very, you know, uh, troubled five years, right? Um, I mean, that, uh, uh, 2006 through 2000, uh, about 2000, yeah, um, to actually the financial crisis, you know, actually onset of the financial crisis was actually 2007, September 2007, with the uh, uh, default of, uh, 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 with the, uh, um, mortgage crisis, right? And then 2008, September, uh, Lehman Brothers, right? Lehman Brothers, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, collapsed. So obviously, you know, uh, uh, it's understandable, right? Why uh, the standard deviation was higher during these five years compared to other uh, five year periods. But um, our point is that um, uh, this two percent is, you know, increasing the uh, uh, the overall uh, risk significantly, overall standard deviation. So plus alpha of two percent annual. Uh, this one is not even significantly significant. Um, was alpha not significant? I thought alpha was significant. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought this T stat. Um, oh, I didn't check the. Uh, T value of um, negative T value, I don't. Does it really matter? I mean, compared to this, compared to this, this may not.
comparatively, relatively, this may look, you know, uh, uh, small, but still it's greater than two, right? I mean, you know, whether it is negative or not. Uh, however, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, agree that is. Uh, I think that it's not, you know, uh, it's not about T value. It's not about, I don't think this is about T value, right? I don't think this is, um, uh, it's not about T value, but you know, uh, this number by the number uh, by itself, because 2% alpha is, uh, as I said, you know, um, uh, historical, um, historical average of uh, real return on uh, real interest rate as uh, uh, historical average of real interest rate is 2% and a historical average of um, inflation is about 2%. So this alpha can be easily wiped out by inflation, right? So um, the interpretation of this statement is that uh, not that it is, you know, um, the T value uh, uh, T stat, it's not about T stat, but it's rather, you know, um, uh, uh, the magnitude of the number, right? The significance uh, uh, is actually about the uh, magnitude, right? Uh, so it's not such a strong, you know, um, um, uh, alpha, right? And in the sense, um, doesn't give you know that much. Uh, so therefore, um, the conclusion is the well diversified portfolios are not really easy to construct. I mean, it, <clears throat> and if you are you know like hair splitting. Right. If you are hair splitting like this, you know, um, uh, clearly, you know, it's not that easy. Uh, arbitrage opportunities are actually uh, uh, few and far between. I mean, and this is something I already uh, uh, talked about at the. Uh, this is something I already talked about at the, uh, uh, you know, uh, early on. Um, if there is an arbit arbitrage opportunity, if it's it's a short-lived phenomenon, it's a short-lived phenomenon, and uh, since market is efficient, right? Most likely, I and mean, of course, you know, uh, uh, a semi-strong form efficient. I mean, uh, if ever it is in you know, a strong form efficient, there can be no opportunity for uh, uh, alpha, right? Um, there can be no mispricing. Everything will be, uh, if it is strong form efficient, everything uh, will be neatly, everything will fall neatly on the uh, uh, security market line. No alpha, right? And then if ever uh, there's alpha, it is you know, very short lived, you know, really, really briefly. It, it exists, you know, really the window uh, of opportunity uh, uh, exist only very briefly. Uh, so, uh, arbitrage opportunities are few and uh, far between. 
On the other hand, arbitrage portfolio added to the risky benchmark portfolio, uh, marginal, at least the marginal increase in overall, uh, <coughs> uh, marginal increase in overall uh, uh, risk is minimal. Now, um, so um, uh, let's take a look at uh, this table. Um, uh, you see, you know, zero uh, if T bill standard deviation of the uh, uh, real return on you know T bills, you know, zero point five percent. It ranges between you know uh, zero point five to one point five. <coughs> And the uh, uh, standard deviation of the total portfolio, right? Uh, we know there's no correlation, so we can, you know, uh, that means, you know, covariance, the middle term, uh, intermediate term is zero, so we can just, you know, um, add them up, square them, add them up, and, you know, uh, take the square root of that, and then. Um, The total uh, standard deviation of the total portfolio is 2.13, 2.3, 2.56, and then you know marginal risk is the this minus this, right? If you do this, this minus this, this minus this, um, that's 1.63, uh, 1.3, 1.06, which is you know, uh, I mean these two are at least these two are greater than. Right, uh, the standard deviation of T bills, you know. Uh, and see, standard deviation of one point uh, standard deviation of T bills, right? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, even yeah, everything is greater than two. I don't know why I put you know that should be also uh, pointing that way. Uh, And um, uh, <clears throat> only, you know, um, um, and adding, you know, uh, um, uh, consisting, right? Uh, the uh, arbitrage portfolio A consisting of the, uh, uh, the benchmark, right? And benchmark has, you know, uh, a standard deviation of 20%, right? But, you know, um, it's just, it's very, this one is really marginal increase, right? You don't really, you know, uh, obviously, you know, um, when you add S&P 500, right? I mean, uh, uh, Using you know um, uh, the benchmark right, uh, the stand adding standard deviation of 
S&P 500 the, the benchmark. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, the to entire uh, the total standard deviation cannot go up that by that much, right? Um, so it's very uh, minimal. Marginal increase in overall is very minimal, right? So um, that uh, Uh, that kind of proves that the uh, uh, although um, I mean overall overall marginal risk increase in overall marginal risk is uh, quite minimal minimal right now, of course you know uh, to T bills it is you know uh, it would increase you know uh, marginal risk significantly but T bills are only five percent of our arbitrage portfolio right. Um, uh, the weight of the table is only 5%. 95% is in you know, our uh, benchmark, right? So uh, overall, I would, you know, uh, clearly, you know, uh, verifies that the overall um, uh, increase uh, in the portfolio is, you know, uh, uh, overall increase in marginal risk is minimal. Okay, all righty, so uh, uh, I think we ran for more than <laughs> like, you know, 40 minutes. So uh, I think I will have to uh, uh, cut the video here and uh, we just have one more uh, section left. So uh, uh, we'll discuss that in the uh, next uh, session. Right? Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, stop recording.